Hello guys, in this video I wanted to show you how to fix some of the problems with the Blackmagic Packet Cinema Camera 4K. Uh, first off, I wanted to say that the Blackmagic Packet 4K uh, is an amazing camera, especially when you consider the price. For $1300, it records an Apple ProRes and RAW at 4K up to 60 frames per second. It delivers amazing colors and dynamic range that makes the images out of this camera truly cinematic. Uh, there is a lot of amazing things that I can say about this camera, but in this video I wanted to concentrate on its shortcomings and how to address them. I came across four problems that really bugged me, but thankfully I was able to find a solution to all of them. On top of that, there are other three less common problems that I know some people out there had with their packet 4K cameras, which uh, also can be easily fixed. First is the weak battery performance. Uh, this camera uses the Canon LPE6 batteries, which uh, only powers this camera for around 40 minutes. Now, the best solution I found to this is simply to just buy more batteries. Of course, buying the original Canon batteries is very expensive since one battery costs $60. But there are cheap alternatives like these Wasabi batteries. These cost me only $10 and they perform equally great, just like the original Canon batteries. They even show you properly the percentage of the battery left, which many of the other cheap uh, substitutes don't do. Other ways that you can power this camera for longer is to use bigger external batteries. Uh, there's a lot of different solutions for that. Some that require expensive V-mount batteries and other similar power sources. I did a whole video about the different ways to power this camera for long periods of time, so check that out for more in-depth info. Honestly though, I find the cheapest, but also the best way, is to just buy a whole bunch of these Wasabi batteries. This will keep your whole camera rig a lot smaller, and it's very fast and easy to switch out the batteries when you need to. The next problem with this camera is the LCD on the back, uh, which is actually a beautiful touchscreen full HD display. Uh, it's also very bright and works great outdoors. The problem for me is that unless you have the camera in front of your face, then you will not really be able to see it because the screen doesn't tilt or flip in, in any way. Uh, if you put the camera up, then you can't see anything, or if you put it really too much lower, then also it's very difficult to see. So the easiest solution is to get a monitor. Uh, there's a lot of great options out there, but there are two in particular that I think offer an amazing deal for the money. First is the Field World Master MA5. It's a 5-inch on-camera field monitor that is very thin and super light, yet it provides amazing features for only $150. It's a full HD display with decent brightness of 450 nits. Uh, it also accepts Cinema 4K signals and has all the key tools like Zebra, False Color, Histogram and Focus Picking. The other, even better option is this Field World FW279. It's also a full HD monitor, but with 2200 nits of brightness, uh, so it's very bright. It means that you can use this outside in direct sun without any problems. Uh, it's also slightly bigger than the other monitor, which makes it easier to nail the focus and see all the details in your shot. This one costs $250 and it also has HDMI in and out, uh, and it can also accept full cinema 4K signal, so it will work with all the 4K cameras out there. Now what I have up here is the slightly more expensive version, uh, which is the FW279S model. The only difference in this one is that there is also an SDI in and out connection. Both of these great monitors are powered by the Sony NPF style batteries, which are cheap and easy to find online. The smaller monitor even offers an 8 volt power output so you can power your cameras using the cheap monitor battery. This is the same function that the very similar Andy Cine monitor that I reviewed before offers. Now, a word of caution. Do not try to connect the dummy battery to this monitor so you can power the Blackmagic Packet Cinema 4K camera, uh, or you will damage uh, your camera or the monitor. I've actually tried this already for you guys, and I managed to burn two of these monitors before I realized that the amount of amps that this camera pulls is simply too much for the single battery to power both the monitor and the camera. So yes, you can use this power out uh, to power all of the Sony cameras and most Canon and Nikon cameras, but unfortunately not this beautiful packet 4k camera all right on to the next point as you've probably already heard this camera just like any other self-respecting cinema camera doesn't have in-body image stabilization which means you will need to stabilize some of the shots other ways uh, there's a hundred percent free way you can do that by installing davinci resolve and stabilizing the shot in post uh, you can also do the same thing in other paid programs uh, such as adobe premiere 
it works most of the time, but this way you are going to be sacrificing on the quality of your video since uh, to stabilize in post means that you also have to zoom in a bit. Uh, this narrows obviously your field of view and also you lose a bit of the resolution. Another way to fix the stabilization is to get a native Micro Four Thirds lens with built-in image stabilization. I use the Panasonic Lumix Vario 12-35mm lens. Uh, here's a shot with no lens stabilization. And now here is the, the same shot with the stabilization turned on. Another great lens is the Lumix Vario 35-100mm, to 100 millimeter, which also smooths out your shots very nicely. Now, if you plan on walking around with this camera, then you will definitely need to get something better than just lens stabilization. I use this camera on the Moza Air 2 gimbal and I find it's really the best deal. It's just as smooth as the DJI Ronin S but it has a cheaper price. Plus it comes with more things and features right in the box than the DJI Ronin S. Now if you really want to get the DJI Ronin S and are wondering if this camera will work on it then yes it will. Uh, you can actually check out my comparison of these two great gimbals for more information. Another thing that can be both a positive and a negative in this camera is the 4 thirds image sensor. Uh, it's actually not as crap as the Panasonic GH5, which is actually a micro 4 thirds sensor, uh, but it's obviously not as big as a full frame Canon 5D or Arial XLF cameras. Is that a bad thing? Uh, well, not really if you want to shoot, let's say, on long lenses, because it means you don't need as big a lens to get the same uh, magnification as you would with a full frame camera. But if you want to get wider shots or narrow depth of field, then the smaller image sensor can be a problem. Now, thankfully, it can be easily fixed by using a lens adapter that is also a focal reducer. There's a few different brands out there that I've tested out, but in the end, I only found one that is worth buying. And that's the Metabone Speed Booster 0.64X. I've tried the 0.71 version, but I didn't like it as much with this camera. The 0.64x speed booster allows you to use any Canon EF mount lens. Not only does this give you a wider field of view and a shallower depth of field, uh, but it also has other added benefits. This adapter adds another 1.3 stops of light, which makes this already great camera even better in low light. Uh, plus, it makes the video sharper when using Canon EF lenses. It's an all-around winner that unfortunately isn't cheap. The price for this adapter is around $650. Now here's a few problems that other people found with this camera and kept on asking me how to fix them. First is the loose battery door compartment. Now many people complain about the door locking mechanism being so flimsy that it keeps on opening up randomly. I myself never actually experienced this problem. In fact, my battery compartment doors are so solid that even when I was drilling a hole through them uh, for my dummy battery wire, I, I still couldn't loosen the door lock, so it would just randomly open. Uh, there are people out there, however, that had this problem, and luckily someone found a free and easy solution to this. He even did a video about it that explains step by step how to do this, so just follow my link to see this video uh, in detail. Another problem is if you're one of those people who connects an external SSD to the Blackmagic Packet 4K camera uh, and you notice that the drive is not recognized in the camera. Uh, there is actually a simple solution to this also. This is already documented by another person, so I will provide a link to the full video. Uh, just remember that you should never ever disconnect an SSD from the camera while it's on. This could actually damage your drive and also delete or damage all of the video files you already have saved on it. Always make sure you turn off your camera before you unplug the SSD and then once your camera is on, you can plug the SSD in to initialize it and start recording to it. Now, the last problem that I heard some people moan about uh, is that the Blackmagic Packet Cinema Camera 4K is not that great for taking photos. That's right, because it's not a photo camera, but a cinema camera meant to take awesome freaking videos. So uh, stop complaining and buy yourself a proper photo camera if you want to take pictures. Easy fix. Anyways, hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please let me know in the comment section. And while you're at it, subscribe to my newsletter for more awesome content. If you want to help support what I do here, then join me on Patreon. Thanks, and I'll see you in the next video.